me walking better Every day I'm shining cause he changed the weather Every day I practice so I could do better Been splashing for a minute, gotta keep my head up And I've been shooting jump Okay, so uh, just a little bit of a combo starter. Let's talk about where, and I'm about to cry and I don't even know why. I felt like I got all these tears out already and I guess not. Um, and real thugs don't cry tears. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, so today is Monday, Friday night on our way home from therapy. We got into, um, I don't want to call it a fender bender. We got T-boned and um, we are, we don't have a car right now and I'm not crying because we don't have a car. I'm crying because <sighs> I know opposition is going to come. And I know that people say when your purpose is so great and you're right on the brink of a breakthrough, the enemy will come, you know. The scripture says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so I know that that is true. And I know I have to keep God's word close to me and I know that when you get a word you have to hold on to it and you have to take it with you everywhere you go and so that's what I'm doing but it still doesn't mean that I don't get frustrated with the process it still doesn't mean that you know the process the journey is is it wearing <laughs> on on me emotionally um I've already made it in my mind there's no going back I've already made it up in my mind that there's no um turning around so so I'm like I don't even know where these tears are coming from but yeah I think the tears are I think the tears are coming from like I don't, I, I, I don't have that support and like in the form or fashion of my mom or in the form or fashion of a family member or my sisters um and so when you're going at this process or journey whatever you want to call it but i know at the end of the day i can't keep this this stature um I can't stay in this place right here, this place of woe is me, um, this place of like, dang, everybody's winning but me. I can't think like that. I can't stay in that place. I know that. So, you know, it's okay to cry. It's okay to get it. I always tell myself real thugs don't cry tears, but you know, we do. We just don't let everybody see them. Um, so... I let it out, I let my frustrations out, and that's why I'm kind of glad that I have this YouTube platform or my Instagram platform, because it is kind of like an outlet for me. It's kind of me journaling, it's kind of my way of journaling, and, you know, 
I'm just taking it one step at a time. And the other day, what was that, Friday, Saturday, I had an event to go to. And I'm telling you guys, like, I had to hustle and bustle my way through the day because something that, you know, I had to go to the store to get some last minute things for the event. And a task that would normally take 30 minutes driving to the store, you know, to get to the store now it takes an hour and a half to two hours um so it's like dang <laughs> you're gonna keep knocking a sister down like can you just leave let me get my breakthrough stop playing with me like the enemy just keep playing like i'm not i'm not here for games like i'm not here for play play i'm not I'm not here for play play and that saturday like I said, it was like really hustle and bustle and from one bus to a next bus to the store. But in between that process, um, I got off the bus and I was walking to the next bus stop and I came across a man who I'm not sure if he was homeless, but his stuff was kind of like in the median of the road. There, there we go, people calling, people that if I were to turn around and ask them for something, they, they wouldn't do it. Um, um, his stuff was like in the median of the road and he was kind of coming like from out of the, the wooded area. So I don't know if he was homeless, I'm not sure. But in that moment, as we started to cross paths, um, I'm sorry, the, the, now these are tears because like, I feel the presence of God. These are the present of, presence of God tears now, so whatever, I'm just going to let them out. So I, um, as we cross paths, I heard God say, give. And in that moment, I didn't think, God, I don't have a car and I need to save my money to get a car right now. And in that moment, I didn't think, God, I don't have enough. And in that moment, I didn't think, you know, a lot of those thoughts that I would have thought back when my faith was so itty bitty, and it probably still is very itty bitty. But, you know, who's to say it is or it's not. But in that moment, I heard God say give and all I could think about was one being obedient to God because that's all I want to do nowadays I just want to be obedient because I love the way it feels I love the way God makes me feel I love the way he loves me I love the way that he takes care of me I love the way that he guides me and, and leads me. And so I know when he says something that it's not going to harm me. So when he said give, I instantly, without hesitation, went into my wallet. And I started to pull out a certain bill. Um, I'm not about sharing, you know, the details. I, I don't like when people do that. If you're going to give, give and don't make it public. Um, and that's not what the story is for. There's a message to it. I started to give out, a, I started, started to reach for a certain bill. And then I heard God say bigger. And even in, in that, you know, him asking for more. There was no hesitation. I just instantly, like I said, in the past, I would have wavered. And in the past, I would have wavered and went for the the smaller amount but instantly I just grabbed the bill and I put it in man's hand and, and instantly I just was overwhelmed by the presence of God and when the man finally looked at the bill amount the first thing that he did was raise his hands to God and say thank you God and gave God the glory and gave God praise and gave God what was due to him. So I'm thankful for those moments. And like I said before, the presence of God was just, just, oh, it was so thick on me and around me and 
in me and through me and just in, in the situation although I was outside I felt like I was just in a tight enclosed space but I wasn't it was just the presence of God and in that moment as I started to walk further to the bus stop I heard God say though your position has changed don't let it change your posture and so I'm grateful that God chooses to talk to me and tells me that I'm doing a good job. Um, and it kind of, I was at a loss for the reason why God wanted me to make the hood certified. I'm wearing it now. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> um, I was kind of at a loss for why God wanted me to make the hood certified Jesus sanctified tea and I was like God what is the message behind it because the message that I had in my head I was like that can't be it and sometimes you know we think that God works in step A step B step C and sometimes a lot of the time God is like Z D A <laughs> like God doesn't work the way we work and so I had to go through the process of making the tea and being faithful to that it would work for my good. And I'm, you know, the teas drop on the 31st, so I'm still technically kind of in the process of it. But it took me to get to the end of the process of actually making it and setting a launch date and having a launch date. Um, that God gave me the message behind the tea and the message behind the tea is... Although your position may change, don't let it change your posture. So, growing up in the hood, I've moved from that. Thank God, you know, my mom was able to buy, a, a, you know, a house or get us out of the, the low income um, Section 8 housing community that we were in to a different, I mean, it was still low income, but it was a better low income area. Um, if that makes any sense and then you know going from there to then um, going into a deep depression and a suicidal state um, then from there going to you know a domestic violence situation and then leaving that situation getting well getting pregnant during that um, and then going into another domestic violence uh, alcohol, drug relationship, um, and then from there going into a healing mode where it was just healing. You need to heal yourself. And looking back at that, it was like through all of that, that's when, you know, at the beginning is when God first called me, like, listen, you, you're mine. You, you know, in the beginning, I was running, as people would say, but eventually I was just like, you know, here I am, I surrender. But through all of those positions, through all of those up and downs, my my posture was, I surrender to you. There's nothing, although in the beginning it wasn't, I was running, he, I, I didn't know then, but I was going to surrender. But um, it was just servanthood. How can I serve you? How can I um, show me how to be humble? Show me how to love. I'm already a giver. I, I like to say that I'm a giver. Um, when do you want me to give? Who do you want me to give to? How much do you want me to give? And I've always kept that with me. And so that is the meaning behind the hood certified Jesus sanctified tees. Like, yeah, I, I, I had it rough back then. And yeah, I came from the hood, and a lot of people think the hood is a bad place. No. Um, the hood is just a culturally, you know, urban, inner city area, um, is what I looked up in the, in the diction, well, the urban dictionary. So it's hood certified. Like, listen, I've been through some things, but Jesus sanctified. Jesus has set me apart. I've been through some things, but God has set me apart. I'm saved. 
like he's got me covered and so that's the meaning behind the hood certified jesus sanctified tea again it's dropping this month on the 31st um i guess i'll add this little piece of a clip to my day tomorrow because i'm going to now do a day in the life so it's about 9 33 tuesday morning um, and I just didn't feel like it this morning. I didn't feel like getting up. Didn't feel like doing anything. Um, everybody was late again this morning. Um, pretty sure the time change has a lot to do with it. Um, especially like with everybody being late and not wanting to get up. And then also me watching Netflix until like one o'clock in the morning doesn't necessarily help knowing that I like to get up early to get things done um, but even on top of that like I don't feel like going to the gym because I know if I go to the gym I have to catch the bus to the gym and then I also have to go um, handle some other stuff today in reference to like the car and stuff like that um, so it's like all of that would normally you know be a morning thing is about to turn into a all day thing and so that's kind of like I don't want to say it's giving me anxiety because it's not giving me anxiety um it's just making me say you know it's easier just to be like I'll do it tomorrow and then tomorrow will come and then I'll probably say I'll do it tomorrow and then I'll get through the whole week of I'll do it tomorrow's and then next week will come and who knows what next week will look like. So this is where I have to ask Father God to order my steps because if you don't order my steps, I'm not about to do nothing. Um, so right now I am about to get dressed. And so we are, and I say we, because I had to pick up the little one from school today. Well, I didn't have to pick her up, but when I got to the school, um, he was in the classroom by himself and they had to remove the rest of the class. So I was like, you know what? If you don't want to learn at school, you're going to come home and learn. And so this is what he's doing right now. Get your work done, please. Um, he's doing work while I'm out and about running errands. So I am now we're really heading back home. Um, we got on the bus. There's a bus that goes straight from um the area where we were at all the way to literally like right in front of our neighborhood um so we got off that bus twice one to stop at the bank and then two to stop at the mba um i was gonna get well i had to handle my driver's license situation um and then i had to get a new id that's what we went to the mba so i can get a new id i didn't have all the paperwork that i needed so i'll just come back tomorrow um, I have to come back out this way anyways to go pay a bill. And then we stopped at the grocery store to get stuff for dinner. I probably will not go to the gym today. But I told myself that I would be committed to working out four days a week. So when I get home, it's nice out. The rain looks like it's not going to come back. Prayerfully, it doesn't. Um, I will do a home workout while the kids are like outside playing. It's, thankfully, it's nice now. It's nice enough to just like go for a run and then come home and do um, a home workout. I told the kids, I said, I'm running away. I am running away. I'm never coming back. Y'all want to be, and then my oldest son, he has this thing where it's like, they say he has ADHD. And I know food has a lot to play with your chemical balance. And so I don't give my kids a lot of sweets. I don't. Um, and so he has this thing where it's like, I'm going to do it behind your back so I can get it. And you're not seeing the importance of it. And you're not seeing the importance of me saying, no, you can't have these sweets. You can't have all this processed food because it's not good for your chemical balance. I'm not here for medicine. I don't want to put my child on medicine. That's not something that I want to do. Um, I've gone back and forth between that and it's just like, eh, eh, I don't want to really put my child on medicine. So, um, yeah. So it's like, 
I go into his room and I do a room sweep. I do room sweeps. And it's like food, wrappers, everything. And he's just like, it's good. I like it. What is your problem? Like, I don't know. And it's just like, he don't care. He don't care. He don't care that it frustrates me. He don't care that I take my time, you know, every other week to get him to therapy so that you could be happy and healthy. No, you just would rather like, and this is what the frustrating part, you look at your father and you see this perfect person. You see him as this perfect person. And I can never tell him that because he's a child. This would probably have to be a conversation that we have when, when, when he's older. But it's like, you give me hell. All day, every day, you give me hell. You go to school. You walk out of class because they are telling you what to do. What do you mean? You're a child. Why can't you get that through your head? I don't care. I don't know why my children are acting like this. I don't understand it. I really don't. And so it's frustrating. It's because it's like when I was a mean, angry, mentally broken mom, you guys just like okay I can see you guys acting that way I can understand why you guys would act in that way it's because that's what I was presenting to you but here we are almost a year later of us you know being in therapy and me just telling you guys I just want a blanket of peace and you don't even care to be like Oh, let me change because she's changed. Like, I don't know. You're a child, but still, you're 12, so you understand. The seven-year-old, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with my children. I just know spiritually we're under attack. And I, when I walked, I left. I literally left out the house yesterday. Um, normally, I would, like, just drive to the store and just get out the house for a few minutes. So, I just had to walk since we don't have a car right now. Um... I had to, I walked to the store and I just was crying and talking to God and I was just like, I hate that I do this alone and I get that I'm never lonely because God is always there, but I do this alone and it's so hard. It's hard to do alone. Especially when you have, you know, the children misbehaving. And then, you know, my youngest son's father, he'll, he always likes to point the finger. I believe 100% my therapist says he's not, but I believe 100% that he's a narcissist. And um, <laughs> he's always just like, I wonder why, like, I wonder why he's acting like that. It has to be something you're doing. And it's like, maybe he's acting like that because you're halfway in his fucking life. Like, do you not understand that? You're a big dummy and stop trying to point the finger at me and be a fucking father and just like, don't be a father when it's time to buy him shit. I buy him shit. I don't need you to buy him shit. I can do that on my own. Be a father. And then you give the excuse of, then you give the excuse of, oh, well, you live so far. Yeah, I live an hour away. And when I had the car, you knew it was not, not a problem for me to drop him off. Like, you knew that. I'd drop him off at any time. Oh, but I don't have a car. You live so far. It's an hour. It's not that far. Um, Just all of that right now emotionally is getting to me. And so in all of this, I just feel like alone. And yesterday I thought about it and I was like, I don't know. I mean, that's why I say I'm always thankful that I read the Bible. I'm always thankful that I know the word of God because as I was feeling like wanting to be like, I give up on God. I was reminded of Job and how Job went through everything. He lost his children. He lost like his way of income. He lost everything. He even had his friends and family telling him, just give up and curse God. Just curse him. Because they're, you know, just like, just curse him because what else is left? And I was just reminded, like, don't do it because at the end of, at the end of the book of Job, you know, he held on to what he knew was true. And 
he still sustained his confidence in God. And so I'm thankful for that I didn't get to that point. Um, and then I had someone tell me, you know, just give yourself grace. And I, I do that, but in this moment, it's like, how do I give myself grace in this moment? How do I give myself grace when it's like, I'm, I'm, I just want someone to say, here, let me help you. Here, my shoulder. I just want someone to say, I got you. That's that. It's not even a scripture. That line that people tell you, oh, he never puts more on you than you can bear. Please show me where it says it in the Bible. It don't say that in the Bible. So stop saying that to people. But all of that to say, like when I was talking to God last night and I got, finally got quiet and stopped talking. He just was like, well, I never told you it would be easy. I just told you I would never leave you or forsake you. And I had to think about all the stories in the Bible where it was never easy. Like, you look at... The Israelites and them leaving out of Egypt, like... They had to go through some things. And the only reason why the first generation didn't get to the promised land is because they complained so much. Um, but yeah. It's just hard breaking generational curses. It's hard healing. hard doing it alone <sighs> um it's just hard And to go further, I don't know, to go further into that, it's like when you choose to make God your source of everything, you got to trust that it's going to come to pass. That when he said it is finished, you have to believe that, that it is finished, that although you don't see it right in front of you, it is finished.